just before the turn of the century, and Holmes and I had just brought to a successful completion the most delicate mission for the reigning family of Saxonia. We were spending a day of relaxation in the picturesque old German town of Nuremberg, preparatory to a leisurely trip on the Rhine, then back to England. As we were getting up from breakfast in our room in the hotel, Holmes said, Wonderful weather, Watson, and I see you in mind the excellent view of this quaint old town from our window. Views? Oh, yes. Yes, the view is all right. Well, you don't sound very enthusiastic. I'm not. You know what the trouble with Germany is, Holmes? No. What? It's full of Germans. Must be the waiter. Come in, come in. Have I the honor of addressing Miss Sherlock Holmes of London, England? This is Miss Sherlock Holmes, and uh, my, my name is Watson, Dr. Watson. Ah, uh, yeah, Miss Holmes, our celebrated colleague. Ah, uh, ah, uh, that's very good of you. Permit me to introduce myself, yes. My name is Ferdinand Langer. Yes, Miss Langer? My friend, the chief porter of this hotel told me of your arrival, and I have come to, to beg of you. Perhaps you can help me with my so difficult problem? If it's a matter for the police, Mr. Langer, I fear I shall be unable to assist you. I have no official standing in the area, and besides, Dr. Watson and I will be leaving tomorrow. Ah, oh, to the police, to the police, I have been Miss Holmes, I believe they laugh. I, I am, uh, how do you say, chief keeper of the Fulf Eckendom. What? The Five Corner Tower of the Castle of Nuremberg. You've heard of it? Of course, and of its famous torture museum. Torture museum? That sounds distinctly unpleasant. For the past 35 years now, I work in the tower. The last 18 years, chief keeper. All this time, there is never a complaint about me. But these last few weeks, the letters have come, all with more awful threatenings. Threats? Mr. Langer? Threats of what? They're too old, I'm getting. So I should resign my position. That if I do not, something terrible happen. Here, here is the latest face up. You shall see, Miss Home. Yes. Um. Well, if my knowledge of German serves me, vague threats, nothing specific. Quite a typical matter. From the irregularity of the handwriting, Mr. Langer, these slanting lines and other definite characteristics, I'd say that the writer of these letters is most definitely unbalanced. Ah. Oh. You mean mad, Holmes? Perhaps, but not outwardly so, but most definitely abnormal. And from the fact that these threats are evidently designed to make you resign, Mr. Langer, I deduce that the author of them is in some way connected to the affairs of the Tower. Have you any suspicions? Sis, I do not like to say Miss Holmes, but there is a young man, my assistant, Heinrich Schiller, who pervades the step into my shoes. He even presumes to be God to my daughter, Elsa. Oh, well, well, we were young once, Mr. Langer. Oh, my God, I better send some answers to this insolent young man. Oh, yeah. So you do, Miss Holmes, think Heinrich wrote these letters? You think I should have him arrested or dismissed? I think you require more evidence than a mere guess, Mr. Langer. Should I get it? Ah, perhaps we combine business with pleasure. What do you say, Watson? Suppose we let Mr. Langer show us the New Mix's most famous site, the Five Cornered Tower. Here we are. If you will follow me through this gate here. Is this way, esteemed guests? Just a moment, my man. Are you in charge here? Yes, madam. Then why are these people being admitted while my friend Miss Simpson and I are kept standing in the mud and barred from entry? Please do be careful, Amelia. It isn't as though we're home. Nonsense. I insist upon knowing. I am sorry, madam, but the tower is not open for visitors until 11 each morning, as you will find in your Baedeker consult, and it is now but 10 o'clock. Then why are these two being admitted? Um, because... No excuses! I am from England, my man, and in England, we believe in fair play. No favouritism. 
sure, Mr. Langer, that you have no objection to showing these two charming ladies to the tower with us. Of course, Miss Holmes, if you say so. You indeed. Thank you very much, ma'am. Just what I should expect from a fellow Britisher. After you, ladies. Lead the way, Mr. Langer. At this point in the very centre of the castle we are, cut from out of the solid rock, built from the prisoners from 1253 till 60 years later. 1253? Victoria, make note of that. What in heaven's name is that black pit yawning in the centre over there? The Deeper Brunnen, the Deeper. Lean over and listen while I drop a stone. Oh, it must be bottomless. About, um, 345 feet, I'd say. You have been here before, Miss Holmes? No, I merely counted the time of the intervals between when you dropped the stone and the splash. Oh, Amelia, look down that corridor. A gigantic shadow. Oh, now, now, control yourself, madam. It's merely somebody approaching with a torch. Uh, good morning, Herr Langer. I did not know you were showing a party so, so early. That is Heinrich Miss Holmes. Follow with us, Heinrich. Yes, sir. Here are the dungeon cells where we kept the prisoners. Yes, most unsanitary. Nothing but damp stone. And here, the torture chamber. What are all these strange objects? Oh, at least there's a couch for the poor prisoners. Hardly, my dear. That, um, we like object proclaims its true purpose. Yeah, Miss Holmes. This was Rack. On it they would die as a victim and with the wheels it would stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch until his bones cracked. Oh, how awful. Come, come, Victoria. No weakness. Unpleasant idea, I'd say. What's that, um, collar thing up there? That cuff fits into that larger iron frame which over the you see. Around the neck of a prisoner it was slipped and locked. So that's the unfortunate man needs to sit, no lie down, no sleep good. A regular chamber of horrors. And there is the boot. The iron frame in which a prisoner's leg was slowly crushed. Pressure for melting lead and heating tongs with pincers. They are all here. And uh, that large iron chair beneath the embrasure. Mr. Lang, I assume that's your famous iron maiden. The iron maiden? It looks just like a statue. I can't say I consider it a very beautiful one. It is a statue, madam, but a hollow one, <laughs> and for good reason. Oh, I think I'd rather not hear about it. Victoria, keep a stiff upper lip. The two halves of the statue swing open, and we sin are the iron spikes. And in a moment, you will see. Into it was placed the victim, and slowly, slowly, the door upon him was closed. The maiden's kiss, the executioners called it. Imaginative bunch of fellows they must have been. Most graphic description, Mr. Langer. Haha, <laughs> thank you. Uh, perhaps one of the ladies would like to open the statue and see within? Oh, no, not I. Nonsense, Victoria. The ghosts of prisoners who have been dead for 500 years can't hurt you. Ah, oh, here, Mr. Guide, I'll open it. Good. You lift with this bar here and then pull open with this handle. Oh, it works rather stiffly. Yeah. Now it's open. <gasps> Good heavens! Oh, there's something inside. The body of a woman. No, don't touch her. Miss Holmes, my letters. Something horrible they spoke of. Now what's happened? Unbelievable. Control yourself, Victoria. Mrs. Schiller, take these two ladies out into the air. Yes, sir. Chin up, my dear, chin up. Lean on me if you'd like, but chin up. I must say, Holmes, that's about as nasty a sight as I've ever seen. Quite so, Watson. Miss Langer, do you recognize this woman? I never saw her before. What time yesterday did the last visitors go through? The museum is closed from six o'clock on, Miss Holmes. And the body of this unfortunate young woman must have been placed here between that time and this present moment. Yeah, but how I cannot understand. Now, alas, to me, the police will have to listen. Undoubtedly. And you should send for them at once. Dr. Watson and I will be leaving Newburgh tomorrow morning, and the authorities no doubt wish to take our statement. Immediately. I shall send for them. We'll wait here for their arrival.
all the scandal. It will wreck the museum. Miss Holmes, you have seen Heinrich. Tell me, could he have so terrible a thing I've done? That, Mr. Langer, is a question that we should leave for the police. I fetched for them at once. Curious problem, Mr. Watson. The solution is quite obviously clear. Solution? This is murder, you mean? <laughs> murder? There's been no murder, Watson. Then what do you mean, Holmes? The corpse is literally staring us in the face from inside that revolting iron statue. Examine the corpse for just a minute, Dr. Watson. You will realize that it exhibits absolutely no sign of rigor. By Jove, you're... you're right. But what on earth does it mean? Simply that this poor woman was dead long before her body was put in the Iron Maiden. I have no doubt that the police will as quickly establish that there is a corpse missing from one of the local hospitals or morgues. Well, by the time the police had finished with us, it was late in the afternoon. We returned to the hotel with the two ladies that had spent so grim a morning with us. And after a tub and a whiskey and soda, I don't know which was more welcome, I came back into our room to find Holmes in conversation with young Heinrich Schiller. Anything I can do, Miss Holmes, I will. I know that the police suspect me of these letters. And how can I prove I did not write them? As his father shows clearly that he thinks it is I behind all this horror. If you would follow my instructions, Mr. Schiller, I think we may succeed in clearing up the matter this evening. Heaven bless you, Miss Holmes, for you can remove the shadows that hangs over the sun. Hmm, yes, yes. Now goodbye, until later. Goodbye, uh, detectives. Goodbye. If the police, the father of the girl you loved, and the girl herself, suspected you of being an anonymous letter writer with a blatant streak of insanity, I greatly doubt that even you can maintain your usual poise. Possibly, but I wouldn't write anonymous letters or put corpses in Iron Maidens. I trust not. Well, I'm ready to do justice to a great dinner and a good night's sleep before our trip down the Rhine tomorrow. I hope the dinner will be good, but I'm sorry to say that your chances of a good night's sleep look extremely poor. Oh, why? Because by 10 o'clock this evening, you and I must be securely hidden in the torture room chamber of the tower. Hmm. Quite. And before we dine, I'd be obliged to act you to unpack your service revolver and make certain it is loaded. We may be depending on it by the end of the night. Well, just a moment. Where are you off to? I'm going downstairs to meet Miss Atterbury. I'll meet you in the dining room. That grime-faced old trout. Don't tell me you're going to invite her and that musty little companion of hers to dine with us. Not at all, my dear fellow. I want Miss Atterbury's assistance in baiting a trap. So there, Miss Atterbury, you have a frank statement of our problem. I understand, Miss Holmes. The difficulty is, although the man in question is undoubtedly as mad as a hatter, there is no way in the world by which I can prove it. And what I fear is beginning with threatening letters and graduating to dead bodies, that his mania could break out in an even more violent form. Oh, Miss Holmes, you don't mean murder? Don't be idiotic, Victoria. Of course Miss Holmes means murder. Oh! If you're willing to take the risk, Miss Atterbury, it is my belief that a sudden and violent shock will serve to bring this man's madness out into the open. But, um, I will not disguise that although Dr. Watson and I will be taking every precaution, you may be running a considerable personal risk. Don't do it, Amelia! This is no concern of yours. Think about what the dear vicar would say. The vicar would probably faint. I, however, am made of sterner stuff. Miss Holmes, I shall be glad to aid you to the best of my ability. So then we will see you at about 11 o'clock, Miss Atterbury. Although you will not see us. It's only 11 o'clock, Holmes. It feels like we've been here most of the night. Dampness of this infernal torture chamber feels like a breath from a tomb. Only hope, Watson, that my estimate of this man's psychology is accurate. I'd hate to think that I put Miss Atterbury into jeopardy unnecessarily. Well, it looks to me like she's the sort of female who could take care of herself if she was charged by a mad elephant. There's nothing wrong with her courage, though. Not many women would. Come right this way, miss. You hear that, Watson? Yes! Yes, I hear them! Now you know why I pointed the hour at eleven. 
There's another perlite that shoots through the embrasure so that you can shoot straight if necessary. I have my revolver ready, Holmes. Be ready for anything, Watson. Once they're in this room, we shan't be able to make the slightest sound. Right you are. Right you are. You are sure, Miss Atterbury, that no one knows about this visit? No. I made a point of telling nobody. Well, uh, only because you have shown such great interest and have been so understanding, what I threw the tower show you at night when the museum is closed. Too so good of you, my dear Slanga. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate it, uh, but I did want to see it by moonlight. When I get back to England, I know I should be the envy of all of my friends. <laughs> really, Mr. Langer, you have the most remarkable ability of bringing up the ghost to the past. When I think of what this room may have known, it sends cold shivers down my spine. Ah, it is because you have the imagination that you so feel that is but right and proper. I was so disappointed today when you were unable to complete your description of all these fascinating devices. There is no reason by now you should not some all be seen. There's a pair of objects hanging on the wall. There. They look almost like a pair of gloves hanging at the end of the iron chain. They are gloves, but of a variety more strange. Come to the wall here. To you, I show them. See, it's the most ingenious. So, the iron gloves open and into them where the hands of the person have put. May I try them? It would all make it seem so real. But why not? Here, your hands you place inside. Like this? Yeah, and then... Them? Yeah. Oh, m most interesting. But uh, it is rather uncomfortable standing here with my hands chained above my head. So, if you don't mind. <laughs> but that is only half of it. Oh, we have not yet seen. Look, I pull back this lever so, and slowly, slowly, these thorns of the floor under your feet move away. What are you. Until you are hanging above a piece that goes down into the deepest depths of the castle. <laughs> and there you shall hang. Shame, I shall hear you. Look how ready I am to pull the levers that the chains will release. And down you will go. Don't touch that lever. Quick, he's reaching for it. Watson! Uh, good work, Watson. Just in time. Is, is everything all right, Miss Holmes? I watched the corridor, as you told me. All right, Shilla. Let's reverse that infernal device and release Miss Atterbury. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, you are right, Miss Atterbury. <sighs> Quite. Although it's not an experience I'd like to repeat. I can well believe that, but there's nothing wrong with your courage, madam. I believe I'd like a cup of tea. Well, we'd better get this fellow to the hospital, Holmes. I hit him through the shoulder. Nothing fatal, but he's losing a lot of blood. Then I will carry him, Miss Holmes. I will take him to the hospital. Go ahead, Miss Atterbury. Why, thank you. I'll take the flashlight. It was the only way, Watson. A long shot, but a successful one. I can't understand what Langer was attempting to gain. I imagine, Watson, that his mind had become twisted while living amongst all these gruesome civics of the past. And having Schiller, as a prospective son-in-law and successor to his position, hatched this mad plot. Well, it all ended well due to your foresight, Holmes. And to your plight, Miss Atterbury. Very good show, I must say. <laughs> it was a pleasure. Uh, tell me, Dr. Watson. I believe Miss Sherlock said that you and she were going down to the Rhine before you returned to England. Uh, you were not by any chance taking the steamer Alchemy, are you? Well, yes. Y yes, we are. Well, how very fortunate. Miss Simpson and I are going on the same boat, so we should all be shipmates for a delightful week. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, delightful. Um, are you a bachelor, Dr. Watson? 
a bachelor? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes I am. The Rhine scenery, they say, is most romantic. Yes, I've heard. Uh, just a moment, Holmes. Oh, my shoelaces come undone. Go on, Miss Atterbury. We'll, we'll catch up to you in a moment. All right, don't be long. I say, Holmes, you take her back to the hotel. I've uh, got something else to do. <laughs> I'm going to change our tickets, Watson. Huh? How do you know? <laughs> I thought you might be thinking of giving up the Rhine trip and getting out of Germany on the fastest train. Brilliant deduction, Holmes. <laughs> Elementary, my dear Watson. Elementary.